Oh my goodness. Hi, everybody. Hi, greetings. Wow. I'm so like, I'm so enamored right now because I, 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 the, the cat thing is, hmm, I opened up my Instagram. Mm -hmm. I was thinking so much about how I'm really desiring, I, I really need like cat energy around me. Like cats are just so... Uh, they are so comforting and loving and intuitive and playful, like you mentioned. And they just, they're such awesome creatures. And I've always loved them. I had a cat that used to terrorize me when I was a kid. Whoa. And I, I, like, she was, he, he was an orange he? cat. Oh, it was a he, he was terrorizing you? You know, those orange cats. They're, they're... <laughs> mm, what was, do you remember his name? Um, we used to call him Mimi or Sunshine. Sunshine was terrorizing you? <laughs> the sunshine was... It was... <laughs> yes. What yes, you... this cat, he would just rev his little paws up and he just... But see, when, when we first, when we initially got him, mm -hmm. he, he came from a, a, a place of trauma. It was a, 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 my mother's friend's cat. And I think, she, I don't know what had happened with her and the cat or what had happened to the cat before she'd gotten him. Mm -hmm. But that cat was pure chaos. <laughs> and, but you know what? It, it, it taught me so much about me and how unconditional I, I can love, how much I really love, because I love cats so much. That did not change the trajectory. Mm. And um, I had a cat after that. It passed. It was, it was kind of ill. Mm. Then I had another cat, and I'd um, given it to a friend, and uh, him and his girlfriend wanted a cat, and I had a dog at the time. So I said, okay, you guys can have it, and I can always come and visit. Mm -hmm. That didn't turn out too good. No. Um, and so I kind of took a break. But then my most recent, um, my most recent like synchronicity, which reminded me so much of this mm -hmm. with you, was I was with a few friends. Um, they were staying with me at my Airbnb about two years ago, mm -hmm. and. I, I, I woke up, they had a meeting to go to, and I said, I really, really, really want a kitten. And that was like the last thing I'd said, and the three of them left. Mm. And they went to their meeting, and they found a kitten, a white kitten, in the middle of the road, brought it back the same day. All right, and I'm just like, okay, I can't make this the, up. Okay. The same day. The same exact day. And I was just like, uh, okay, and then the other day, one of my girlfriends, she 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 messaged me. She's like, I had a dream about a black cat. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing all, all black, and I'm like, you decide to tell me about, and then you have this kitten, and I'm just like, once again, wearing black again. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I, I... Something in the universe is brewing. <laughs> I know that was a lot, but <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> So when when stuff like that happens, Mona, like what does that tell you? You know, what do you what do you gather from all those things happening at the same time? Um, you know what? And oh, another sink to to throw in the mix of in the midst and the mix of things was I posted a picture of me today with this like um like a pillar of the Egyptian hieroglyphics, mm. and you mentioned. Egypt, you mentioned, then you mentioned the matrix after I had already said it, but you didn't see my comment yet. So I'm just kind of like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, 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 what's, what's, is there a supreme like awakening happening in, 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 a, in a way that is beyond? I feel like I'm breaking the veil a little bit more. <laughs> like, that's the best way I can explain it. So you said like shattering the veil, the veil is being torn down yes okay. yes definitely that's definitely what i'm i'm sensing with this it's so beyond me honestly so i, I physically i'm not necessarily comprehending everything but subconsciously there's something definitely going on and and it's like kind of like hey hey <laughs> hey <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you know, like, what does it tell you to do when, when you see so many, when you hear so many, when you experience so many synchronicities, does it tell you to slow down? Does it tell you to meditate? Does it tell you to reflect? Does it tell you to connect? Does it tell you to expect? Like, what does it tell you to do when you, when you experience that? You know, it's, it's, it's uh, interesting you asked that because I was laying here about an hour ago and I, my body was just tired because I've been working out and I was just letting myself rest. And um, I, 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 I was trying not to fall asleep so that I could actually meditate and really observe my thoughts because my mind's been racing a lot. I've been thinking about so many things and I'm just sitting here and I'm like, I need to kind of take it easy. And I feel like I'm in this really interesting space in my life where um, like I, I, I want to get up and make food right now, but my body's just kind of like, I just had a banana. I was like, okay, add some cherries. I'm like, okay. And I'm hungry, but my, my physical body is hungry. My spirit is kind of like fast for a second. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm listening. Listening. <laughs> so yeah, I, I couldn't I can't really necessarily put it in words, but um I do feel a shift occurring for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause I've heard people talk about spiritual hunger as well. Like there's so many different types of hunger. Some people have like mental hunger or emotional hunger or physical hunger, but when you say that your body was hungry, but your spirit, there was something different about your spirit. What did you say again, Mona, about your spirit? Oh, hey, Mona's gone. What happened to Mona? Yeah. It was just getting good. The hunger of the spirit. Yeah, that's right, Louisa. I was wondering. Yeah. Man, man, that was intriguing. That was intriguing. Oh, she said, oops, okay, let's get her back in here. Hold on. Bam. Okay. Bam. Okay. We, we back. <laughs> okay, I'm here. We back. we back. So you were just about to talk about the spirit. Yeah, let us hear it. Yeah, I, I um, you know, I definitely, I feel as though there's so many obvious signs right now, especially in this time space reality that's kind of revealing itself, showing, um, you know, there's this, uh, we are in this very interesting space right now where how do I put this in words? And you're saying the spirit, okay. So the spirit is 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 revealing so many things and the physical is kind of attempting to um, quiet the spirit. It's like this this battle. It's like this battle. The physical is like density and the spirit, the, the I mean, the physical is like uh, density and the spirit is like, no, etheric energy. Like it's so beyond that. And um, it's, for me, especially being in, you know, the United States, in this, in this realm here, the way things are so usually synthetic and, you know, so watered down, diluted, so many, you know, veils, so many things that we're not really seeing, seeing. And when I say see, I mean with the first, not the, these two. Mm -hmm. And, um... I think the spirit is 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 hunger it has a hunger for the depths the primordial the waters the 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 deeper essence of what life is about versus all these other little illusions that are everywhere constantly trying to distract us you know okay so that's deep so it's like it's it's more than just the surface level you're talking about like going, like submerging into the depths, the darkness. Yeah, the womb, right. The womb, okay. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh I, I got a picture. You gave me a vision just now of like, um, like if most people are, you know, with their snorkels, you know, breathing at the top, like you, you have on the oxygen tank and the scuba gear and the flippers and the diving, you know, you're going down there. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting. And it lately, I don't know about you guys, but the synchronicities have been almost, I don't want to use the word pains thinking cause they don't hurt, but that's metaphorically. I'm just using that as a metaphor in the sense of, it's just like, what are you trying to tell me? It, it, and, and for instance, I'll, I'll say a word and I'll be, I don't, tell me if you get this mm -hmm. too, you, you know, be by a radio or something and you say a word and you say the exact same word mm -hmm. that the person on the radio is saying, and like they said, phenomenal and you just said phenomenal you're like as they're saying it and it's like right glitch glitch what like yes yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> they had that you know mona they also had that in the truman show you ever seen the oh, truman show with jim carrey gosh you see, yes see that? absolutely so in during their scene there was a scene of the truman show where he was uh he was driving down this driveway and you know, he, he drives down this driveway every day, you know, nothing is ever out of place, out of whack or whatever. And you know, the pedestrians are walking, the civilians are talking, they're all walking around and he's driving. And then he's listening to the radio and it might've been like FM or AM radio, but all of a sudden the radio starts to get a little staticky. Mm. And it's like, <laughs> hold on. All right, he's making a left. Okay, <laughs> okay, he's turning the signal. All right, do we still have him? Do we still have him? Wait, can he? Wait, what line is this? Can you hear this? Can you hear what? What line? No, change, change lines, change signals, change channel. And then it went back to the music. And he was like, huh? You know? And it was, that was the glitch. Like that was to show him he had peaked beyond the veil. Yeah, you know? definitely that that that's a that's a that movie one of the most significant parts of that movie to me is just the very very beginning mm -hmm. when the satellite i think it's the satellite fell out of the sky something fell out of, and it said serious on it mm -hmm. and you know i've just been sitting here lately like i was with a friend the other day and um, we were looking up at the sky roof from his, from, we were looking up from his sky roof. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad he was present with me because I like, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> we both were looking up and I saw a flash. I saw the first flash, he saw the second mm -hmm. flash. But mm -hmm. it was like a camera took a picture from the sky. I can't make this up. I'm like, am I? ripping i'm not tripping no. i'm not i'm just I, and i'm like did you see that he said i saw the second one i'm like okay 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 all right okay <laughs> like, <laughs> like i'm not tripping i'm not tripping no, yeah yeah no and it's so crazy i you know i've gotten beyond the point of i i would have maybe even last year year ago before this time i would have felt so uncomfortable saying these mm. things but on on you know live but it's to the point now where i'm just like Psh, whatever I've seen a trail of stars. I even got it on, on, I recorded it, like a literal trail of like stars that look like it was a UFO of some sort. And it's going up in the sky. And I'm like, wow, wow. You're like, <laughs> aircrafts, aircrafts don't move like that. You know, <laughs> you're like, yeah. Right. Like we... <laughs> right. And, yeah. and you know, and then, you know, people, when I have some uh, certain conversations with certain friends, acquaintances and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we talk about like the, um, what are those things on the ground that you see not, uh, that they have like crop circles. Okay. Like signs. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. where, did, where does, what is going on here? And I, I, I personally feel like, you know, I definitely do feel like we are in a semi. Mm -hmm. I straight up do on so many levels, like a mm -hmm. real semi. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I find it interesting because I think about how, how, how much, 
how much things have kind of inverted in this reality. And you think about all of the things, the tools that we had before, um, you know, temples and churches and there were bells and they extracted the bells. There's not, there are not nearly as many bells as they used to be mm. in these, in these places. And these used to be places uh, before they got inverted, so to speak, that people used to come to heal and, and uh, regenerate their power. Um, you know, playing organs, your, your organ, your skin, your, your, you know, your biggest organ is your skin and your internal organs. Mm -hmm. Um, harps, you know, piano, things that pull at your, your heart strings, things that literally help to help you realign with your chakras on, on a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Um, I think of Bell, I think of Rebel, you know, it's like, Hey, let's take these bells away because have you ever seen uh, the Spider-Man with the Venom and they go into the church? Yes. And he's, the bell is ringing and Venom is getting out of the, and I constantly think about that because I, I feel as though what's happening in society is there's such a crazy spell over us in a way where we are so in a, um, in a, what state is that where you're in the deep, is it? Theta. Like state of state of hypnosis almost yes it's like a very deep hypnosis mm. where people are not seeing because that that frequency mm. is not hitting the way it used to right and we're we're mostly resonating at a 440 hertz a disharmony we are uh, this this earth is usually resonating at 432 hertz that's the that's our natural tone but they they signed it off they had a signatory where they said, we are forevermore turning the middle A into 440 hertz versus 432 hertz. And so we are in a, collectively, we are in a disharmony. So these grade A top-notch studios where people are recording and all of that, everything is tweaked a certain way. So when everything is being emitted, everything is frequency, energy, vibration. So when it's being emitted, we're hearing, you know, we are hearing things that are distorted, really, and it, it appears to be otherwise, but subconsciously we are picking up all of those distortions, therefore putting us in an inverted space of mind. We use 100% of our mind to listen to music, 90% of that being subconscious, 10% of it being conscious. When you think about who's in charge of music and all of that, and you put th things together, it's like, <sighs> Uh, I love hearing people's visions about this reality. It helps me expand my right, right. We, we. It's like that, that real, beautiful, um, collective, high vibrational consciousness, and mm -hmm. seeing, seeing the reflection of that. You know, versus sometimes I, 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 I know I'm like word vomit right now because we're, you know, I, I, I feel home when I speak to people who can really understand this language so it, to speak no, 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 i love it you know it's like you you express the way you know best right you know yeah you know and i you took me back to those scenes like um you know mona when you're talking about frequency and energy and vibration and disharmony and i remember the the symbiote suit and yeah that venom he had like the symbiote was over him but then when they were hitting it, when they hit that bell, it started that supersonic frequency started to blow it off of him, you know? So yeah, it feels very intentional. Yeah. yeah. And your etymology too, the way you're intentional with your words, the etymology of bell and rebel, I never put those two together. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a compliment coming from you because you're such a wordsmith. So it's like, <laughs> I hear you and I'm like, I'm like, wow, reflection, like, <laughs> yeah the the words and that's 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 another thing about you know how intriguing this language is because there's so many different ways to format things you know and and um it's i've i had a newfound uh love for etymology some years ago mm -hmm. and when when i started really exploring it learning latin and learning this word and what that word means and the root of this and you get to a point where that's another um, level of like breaking through, peeking through the veil because mm -hmm. you're like, wait a minute, this word sounds like this, empath, empath, empathetic, 
pathetic, huh? Like what? And then you're like, wait a minute. What's the... <laughs> you go back and you just start doing all this research. Like, what's the root word of this in the Germanic version of this and the French mm -hmm. is that and all of these things. And you're like, okay, 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 okay. This is coded. Okay. And then it goes even further back to when we look at, you know, ancient time and coding and language, they look back at these Sumerian texts and they're doing everything to decipher. They're like, what does this stuff mean? We don't even, we don't know what any of this is. Right. And, you know, um, I find that the originals, the, um, those of us who stem from such a, uh, uh, ancient origin, we naturally have this subconscious awakening at some point in our life where we're just like, and the subconscious starts to surface consciously and we're like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm having visions, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm starting to say things that are not even this language, I'm starting to see things that are beyond what I would typically see and then you're like, okay, okay, something's going on here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I see, I see what's going on here. You know, I'm catching on. To it. So you know, it's like Morpheus. You know, he asked Neo, you know, if if he wanted to see how far the rabbit hole goes. Mm. You no, know? like, you know, you're trying to find out. Like red pill, blue pill, the choice is yours. He was like, what did he say, Mona? He said, I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through mm. it. No, mm -hmm. like either you want to stay in Wonderland, or, you know, or we see how far the, the rabbit hole goes. So when you're talking about that awakening, that everybody has that awakening, when do you recall that it happened for you? Like, when was that moment that you said that, you know? You know, it's interesting. So um, I was born, when I was born, I was born almost dead. I was born with a cord wrapped around my neck. Mm -hmm and I was blue in the face. And so the doctor, she pushed me back in my mom's womb, unraveled the cord, pulled me out. And I didn't, I was breathless, voiceless for a while, a little while, a few minutes. And then finally I let out a huh, like a sigh. And sometimes I, I really feel as though that has a lot to do with my, uh, um, way of viewing things in life like I'm, I'm kind of interdimensional so to speak and um, you know for a while I, I've been like that since I was a child I could see things um, I would have premonitions I would see spirits I still see things not not in the same way um, sometimes yes but when I was a kid it was like you know when you're a child your imagination is very it's very pure potent it's not being tampered with so you're seeing things in a very um it's very natural state and i think um i just i i was always like that i was always the black sheep mm -hmm. but um you know I, I i used to people say black sheep and i now i look at that and i'm like the black sheep is really just um a chosen one in a hidden you know like in in hidden hiding in in, in what do you call it? Sheep's clothing. Ah. And um, you know what I mean? Like people who are here to enlighten, people who are here to get people out of just the, into the light, the lucid. Yeah. And um, I've always really just been in that realm. And my family being uh, from the Caribbean and how, you know, the way that bloodline is and how we see things and all of that. It, it, all of those things kind of made me feel like I've always just been able to see. Mm. And um, it's been a very interesting journey to say the least because I've been always trying to fit in okay. until a certain stage in my life where I'm like, I don't think it's meant for me to be fit in. <laughs> okay. So you stop, you stop trying to fit in then? I had to, I had to because my my you know when you suppress and you suppress after a while your spirit's like i want to jump out of the body if you do not acknowledge me yeah. we're gonna have some problems like you gotta you gotta face this you have to you have to see 
you have to uh, uh, express yourself in a way that that is going to be uncomfortable, but it's going to serve you and everybody else around you. And I find that you know, being in this in this matrix, um, there's such a the goal for the oppressors is to keep our energy like this. Keep those of us who have that that supreme activated DNA, that that higher, higher consciousness. It's kind of like, eh, yeah, that's cool, but it needs to be regulated. Keep on it down. And I'm like, huh, and they come up with all these rules and regulations. Here, we have money. It's not backed by anything, but you need it. So go be a slave for us and go do this and go do that. Mm. It's like, mm. huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, you know, and it goes so deep. So, you know, when you're talking about this moment, and thank you for sharing this, by the way, like, just thank you for, you know, sharing the, the beginnings and how it's all started and, and where it's, you know, what's transpired and how it's transitioned. Because when you're talking about like that level of clairvoyancy, you know, to see things that other people don't see, and to, to view the world with with different eyes to have that lens, you know, when you're going through that and growing through that, whereas there might be children who were told, oh, no, you don't, you don't see that, or that's not real, or that's fake, that's imagination, that's imaginary, that's, you know, that's an illusion, don't worry about that. And then they have those abilities kind of closed, you know, how did you keep that third eye open like how did you keep that clairvoyancy and how did you hone that so that you you know continue to to show that mm, that's a beautiful question um i would definitely say that music mm. harmonizing i love to play the piano i love i have my singing bowls just lined up right here mm. my bells my chimes that very much so keeps me in alignment with higher, higher, higher spaces. Um, psilocybin, mushrooms, even microdosing, taking, you know, um, higher dosages, uh, speaking with the elders, taking um, ayahuasca, uh, toads medicine, things of that nature. You know, it, it really just kind of Kind of is like um even if it's momentarily for instance the toes medicine is like it felt like this but it it was something i can't even vocalize it was something that my spirit felt that was just like okay confirmation you're not tripping you are you are a soul mm. in a body having a human experience you are not the body and that's as we're under this you know as we're experiencing life it, 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 we ch are, it's so easy to physically be like, no, like this is this, this physical, it's all about physicality. And it's like, you know, because that's what we are so fed that. And then we are also fed the idea that when someone transitions and they leave their vessel, it's mourning, it's so sad, it's devastating when realistically it's supposed to be celebratory. Wow. We are ascending, we are going into another space, time and dimension. And, uh, you know, I feel like there's been such a misinterpretation mm -hmm. of, uh, of the things that we know and the things that we think we know. It's not that. And, you know, they say life is, is so much, what is the what is that quote where when you look when when you see beyond the other side once you once you cross the other side you realize like oh life begins once you cross the other side of the fence kind okay. of okay not to say you physically have to die to experience life mm. but um i'm all over the place pardon no me, yeah but, no i see where you're going yeah yeah but um, it's like that, that idea of having to kind of kill off certain versions of you mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the spirit to elevate while you are in the physical so that your spirit can be in alignment with your physical as you're still physically here. 
Yeah. And um, going back to what you said, yes. So the the music, psilocybin, ganja, absolutely has helped me to kind of really slow my brain down and hyper analyze things as well. Meditation. Okay. Um, and I, I find that I'm I'm kind of one of those people who naturally meditates mm. without even I'm like constantly in this space where I'm observing and seeing things in a way that's just not uh, I'm always kind of in this very gamma state and I'm transitioning from gamma to theta then I'm like from theta to delta then I'm from delta and, I'm, and then I go and then I work my way then it's, it's just like I'm I'm in a constant prayer meditation mode yeah and it's so interesting because i don't i i like i said that going back to the normalcy thing i i don't know how to do it <laughs> <laughs> it's just happening right yeah. right yeah i yeah. love that you know it's amazing like um just a dimensional traveler you know just like going through the levels and just yeah you know like someone was saying you know speaking of music one of my friends was saying like um you know in the universe like you said with the etymology like the one song the universe she said that you know some people are meant to play the bass notes they can play the bass notes if they want but i'm up here in the treble clef she said mm -hmm. <laughs> she said i'm up here in the treble clef so you know, when you're talking about that, and I love what you said, Mona, about, you know, the reverence that you have for transitioning and that transcending of this earthly realm or this physical shell that you know that you're a soul in a body. You're not, you, you are not the body, but you live in a body. So it reminded me when I was in Mexico, we were in this place called uh, Puerto Morelos, mm. Mexico. And we stayed at this uh, this place called Casa de Casa de Muerto Muerte or something like that. It was like uh, they honored the Day of the Dead. Oh and, man! And there were pictures all over the walls and all over this this uh, place Casa de la Muerte or something, where they had these people with these paintings on their faces and and it was like skulls you know, like skulls on their faces and uh, they revered the dead. It was like a celebration. It wasn't a mourning. It was a, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm getting goosebumps right now because, okay, so first you're making me think of that movie. Have you ever seen the movie Coco? No, tell me about it. I think it's called Coco. Uh, uh, Coco? Uh, it's, it's, um, it's about this, this child and he has this, um, grandfather i think it's his grandfather who who had ascended and um transcended both and um you know he didn't know much about him and there was this other man who basically was taking all of the uh, i don't even want to give it away you gotta watch it it's a really good movie um he was kind of like taking all of the credit from this kid's grandfather and they were celebrating that day and that kid went and he found a way to go on the other side it, it, it long story short uh the most interesting thing about that movie to me was the moment that the ancestor was forgotten was the moment that their soul kind of diminished so with the moment they they were forgotten by their loved ones, mm -hmm. their soul kind of like vanished. And I was like, oh my goodness. It's it's a really good, for it being a child's movie, like Moana, you know, like Coco, those kind of movies. I love seeing that because it gives you so much insight on what's going on beyond what we're seeing with our two eyes. Um, the Land of the Remembered, I haven't seen that, but uh, what was I gonna see? Yeah, that movie was really good. Um, and oh, that's what I was gonna say. When I was a kid, mm -hmm. one of the earliest things I remember uh, seeing that was spiritual was um, I was I was with my dad and we're driving and it's super dark and it's like he we're on the highway um, and uh, I saw these skulls like mm -hmm. outside of the car like just bouncing around. 
like looking at me like bouncing around and i'm thinking like and i'm not scared i'm just kind of like okay <laughs> like i don't know what's going on here but hey i guess like and i'm thinking you know maybe i'm just tripping uh maybe you know and i i, I wish i wish i could ask him if he remembers me ever saying anything about that or whatnot because i don't know if i was ever brave or courageous enough to say to him hey i see skulls like but there was a point in time when i was a kid and i was on a bus with my mom and we were headed back to brooklyn from one part of brooklyn to the other part of brooklyn and i saw those skulls but this time they were so big and they were like in this blue flame and it was just like some were bigger than others but they were all aligned and i'm like okay what's going on i said mom somebody just died she's like what are you talking about i'm like somebody just died and then she said that she told when she tells me the story she says that someone or people on the bus were saying well honey you know people are always dying like <laughs> and i'm like yeah i know but somebody just died. yeah like just now. Fast forward, the bus is going, 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 and there's a huge wreck. Like, oh. huge wreck. Like, something, you know somebody did not survive that in the flesh. And I'm like, oh, wow, wow, wow. So, you know, and that, I think, also was symbolic for my mom also seeing realizing that I could see like that. She sees like that. My dad could see like that. So with the two of them being able to see like that, and now that was kind of like the initiation, the the confirmation, yeah. shall I say, of like, yeah, you, you, you kind of got it too, you mm -hmm. know? It runs and, in the family. Yeah. Definitely. It, it runs in the family. Yeah. Yeah. So super, super, um, uh, you know, super, what's the word? Supernatural kind of things. And to today, I was I was conversing with a good friend of mine the other day, and we were talking about wonders, mm -hmm. like, and how, you know, we are the universe experiencing itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with all of the tragedy and the sad, morbid, and the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's, it's kind of in a way necessary to a degree. I don't like all the bad stuff. I don't. But let's just say we're in a simulation, right? The bad stuff is happening, but it's not really happening. So let's just say, you know, all of these things, we're, we're experiencing this, we're experiencing this. And the whole point is the, the wonder. Because if we're just here and everything is just working so smoothly and smoothly and smoothly, mm. that's great as well. That's awesome. I love, I love that. I love to just be in this supreme bliss but maybe we came here to experience the chaos so that we could strengthen our soul Ooh. and see things you know um be able to open up deeper dimensions of our soul and expand and expand and expand on that and it sounds a little wild a little crazy to you know someone who was just in the physical like in the physical like what do you mean tragedy is necessary what do you mean this is no what do you mean that these things are supposed to be happening? Well, maybe, maybe they are. Maybe they're supposed to be, and maybe we're just um, not looking as deeply as we possibly can at them. See, that's that's perspective. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's perspective right there, Mona. Because I mean, what you're saying, you said the soul is expanded in chaos. Is that what you said? Like it takes, sometimes you said it takes chaos to expand the soul. Right, 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 right. right. Now hearing you say it back to me, I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it feels like you're just channeling this information. Like, you know, maybe this is not what we think it is, you know, maybe it's different, you know, it's, it takes, you know, it takes some when to have that perspective for, for people to really, you know, sit back and ponder and actually wonder, like, you know, even when you were talking earlier as well, Mona, about things that people see as experimental or recreational or communal or, you know, spiritual when it comes to traversing the different realms with 
plant medicine, you know? Like, like when it comes to combo or when it comes to bufo and, and 5-MeO and DMT and ayahuasca, like I know people say that there are people that this is for, but in your opinion, who would you say these things are not for? Is, is there anybody that it's not for? Um, it, it absolutely is for everybody because nature is everybody. Okay. We are, we are that. Yet, what I would say is um, it could put the soul in a state of shock if somebody is not gradually prepared. For instance, I wouldn't, if someone is, is not really done some deep diving inner work prior to doing something such as ayahuasca iboga or something of that nature mm -hmm. oh no don't, don't touch that because you're going to <laughs> you're gonna go somewhere and the 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 inner inner depths of your lower self is gonna be like yo whoa 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 inner child trauma sad all that it's like at least coming to terms with that and uh, you know a little bit a more like a lot of bit first gradually and then I, I i also think that i was talking to somebody earlier about mushrooms mm -hmm. you know microdose microdose little at a time little at a time and then when you are prepared you'll know you're you you'll be ready and and i feel people have they they know they have a calling they gravitate to towards it nature will let you know it's it's like nature says hey I think you're ready and the person will follow because it doesn't, it chooses us. Mm. It lets us know. Not everybody's just like waking up and saying, you know what? I want to try ayahuasca today. Yeah. I think I want to go to Peru and go on a retreat and figure this. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there, there's people who are just, who, who wake up and they, they feel like, like, I really want to shift. I feel like I'm having a calling. I feel like I'm having a spiritual awakening. And then Mother Nature is like, Neturu is like, yep, yep, that's me. Mm. Hi. Come here. I got something for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that's, I'm, I'm right there right now. I was okay. like, I think it's time for me to do a little bit of psilocybin. I think it's time for me to kind of, um, um, really have that that egoic death um, mm -hmm. and 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 kind of bring to life a, a, a newer um, healthier ego because I, I feel I can always feel when I start feeling these feelings of like <sighs> I'm connected but I need to get connected and then it's like oh you know we'll take we'll take these these this medicine and then it kind of helps us get back on track again and you know the thing about this society we've been so fooled about what medicine is and what it isn't and we're constantly thinking that these opioids and these other kind of the uh, synthetic pharmaceuticals are actually um you know giving us a remedy when instead there's just supremely suppressing um the most significant parts of our soul and i'm like okay no 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 i don't i don't it, i don't think that's where we are supposed to be at all and that's part of also the inversion it's like wait a minute all of this fake stuff we're putting in our body god knows what it's doing to our dna god knows what it's doing to yeah you know as a collective and um so i i think about how you know how much further we'd be in life as a collective if we were if we were back in nature if we were back in nature i think i i i have this ongoing joke about just you know uh, putting lsd or, or 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 shrooms in people's toothpaste instead of uh fluoride like hey guys uh <laughs> why don't you brush your teeth with this <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh man. Wake up. <laughs> like a slap from right. the universe. Like slap. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah. Wow. wow. In the toothpaste. Oh my God. <laughs> Mouthwash. You know? Yeah. You know, it's, you know, when you speak, Mona, because like when you're talking about this, it's, 
and, and you really actually hit home, you know, talk about plucking heartstrings. You hit home in many ways for me that resonate because, you know, growing up, of course, at a young age, they said, okay, this kid is not like the other kids. Mm. This, this one is not like the other mm. ones. And so they diagnosed me with what they call was attention deficit, you know, hyperactivity disorder. And so there were a lot of times that I used to hide and you just brought me back to this just now. I used to hide the Adderall, you know, I used to hide the Ritalin. I used to hide like these pills and these prescribed medications in pots and, and things and, and corners and crevices. I used to, you know, act like I took them, but I didn't want to take them because it was suppressing so much of myself. It was suppressing so much of, of me, you know, of who I am. And I, I looking back, I'm like, how was I was so young, but I was still so sensitive to the fact that this is not who I am. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for bringing that back. Oh. Thank you. For Right. my pleasure my pleasure and and i'm so glad you're bringing that up it's like i'm so glad let's even have this conversation because i'm feeling parts of me right here like my crown activating it's just like ooh, getting tingles and getting chills i'm like yeah that's supreme divine knowing right there like i feel that and and i'm thinking about how much of an advocate i am about people recognizing I have a really dear friend of mine and um she she has uh, she has schizophrenia right but i i when i look at her i'm like do you know in ancient times that you were deemed one of the most honorary most uh sacred figures mm -hmm. this is not what they're telling you it is same with the adhd same with these um all these other these are gifts and we are to be embracing them but we've been told no 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 no. you need to focus you have to go to school and when the bell rings you gotta go to the next and you, gotta, uh, 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 and you have to have this kind of order but this order is out of order and after a while when you're faking an order the true order is going to get really angry it's being suppressed and it's going to be like chaos 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 and here's the chaos the void, the black kitten, the cat, like <laughs> the Lilith, right? Yeah, hey, kitty. <laughs> the black like, kitten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the void. yeah. You know, and so the I, I constantly am trying to remind her to bring her back to self. Like, hey, you are absolutely perfect as is and we have to stop claiming because you know we, we we manifest not only with the words itself because we're thinking of the word and what the word is prior to even speaking it mm. but of course as we speak it now it's becoming materialized mm. but when you're thinking like oh i have schizophrenia i have adhd i have this disorder i have that and i used to say i'm so depressed and I kept that for years and I held on to it. Like it was like a, a, a badge of honor. I'm depressed. I'm suffering from depression. Woe is me. My life has been so fucking hard. Ah, ah. And then one day, my, my uncle, who's a life coach, very spiritually tapped in. He sat and said to me, you don't own that. Let it go. Stop owning that. Why are you owning that? Like, why are you, why are you? Let it go. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm depressed. He's like, are you? Is that, are you really? Is that who you are? I'm like, yeah, I am. I am. Said, and then, you know, yeah. you know, and then you look at it, you think after a while, you're like, wait, I'm really saying that. Like, I'm really speaking that and I'm believing it and I'm knowing it to be true. And now I really am. So now I don't want to move. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. And it's, it's now it's just projecting into my reality so heavy that now, yes, you are depressed, but you don't have to remain depressed. And um, of course, as a human, as a, a being of flesh and light and energy and electrically, you know what we are, we're gonna experience these emotions, the energy in motion. It's just a matter of how we, we have to find that ebb and flow and how to not necessarily control it, 
but mm. manage it and allow it to flow through us. And that was another thing my um, uncle would say. He's like, whatever you resist is going to persist. Mm. So mm. stop resisting it. Let it flow through you, experience it, feel it, and then keep it moving. Yeah. And, and the more I started to practice that, I'm like, oh, I don't have to hold on to so much pain. I don't have to hold on to these titles. I don't have to hold on, I don't have to, hold on to anything. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an ongoing practice. But as we grow, as our soul grows, it's like as we elevate, it becomes easier day by day to say, you know what? I'm the maker of this. I'm creating this. I can create better. I don't have to listen to you. I don't got to listen to you. I'm going to listen to you because I like what you're talking about. Screw you. Like, you know, and the list goes on. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know? well, Nivea yes. said they would have a magical morning every day, right? With the toothpaste. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yes, yes. They, yeah, like, you know, Nivea is saying the same thing because she told me, you know, they called it, uh, in her language, they called it Adehode, Adehode, and this, uh, that stood for ADHD. So <laughs> thank you for speaking on that, Mona. And, and what is your uncle's name? What was your uncle's name? You know, ironically enough, since we're, since we're, since we're there, since we're here, it's so, it's so crazy. I know I'm channeling right now because there's other stuff that, like, back of me is like, hey, 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 don't forget to say hey, don't forget to say this, hey. Mm -hmm. But his name's Lionel. And mm. Lionel is, um, it means lion, a.k.a., you know, cat. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a journey, to say the least. Yeah. And um, um, it's beautiful to see the synchronicities. It's beautiful to see the soul fam. Mm -hmm. um, because you know it can get it can feel very empty sometimes when you don't have certain um reminders people as reflections divine reflections to remind you like you're not the only one you are yeah. not tripping you might be on a trip right now called life but you're not tripping <laughs> like yeah. you know what i mean yeah and and thank you also for that message mona on you know, the things that in this day and age that are feared, but you said back in another day and age, they were revered, mm. you know, like they shouldn't be feared. They should be revered. Like whenever these things appear. So I love that, you know, I love that you were like, no, that's your power. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It is. It is. And I think that the more, that we wake up to that, you know, the more that we build uh, apothecaries or apothecaries, oh God, the, the, the dyslexia in me is coming. I, I can't, I don't know which way to, how to say it. Oh, good. The, um, is it an apothecary? Apothe apothecary, yeah. You they, said it. Right. The more of those we start to create and the more we get the youth involved with knowing how many all of these synthetic things are based solely on the true nature of nature mm -hmm. that's that's why they say farm a pseudical farm it's the farm right we're growing these things these things were growing in our backyards these things are all accessible natural herbs that are here to help enlighten enlighten and to you know, help us to, uh, uh, um, I mean, on so many levels. So the ADHD, there's there's herbs for that. You know, we have um, uh, St. John's, the mugwort. We have, uh, I, um, not ayahuasca, uh, ashwagandha. We have so many different variations, herbs for um, sleeping. Of course, you've got lavender and this and that. Then you have all of these different things to help alleviate all of this stuff. And um, they made it so difficult for people where it's like, oh, we're going to give you this medicine for this. But by the way, it has this side effect because it's not really real. It's, it's This is all, uh, uh, you know, chemically, yeah. we're playing around with this stuff and just kind yeah. of tampering with you guys and it's experimental. We're the you know. 
pigs, the guinea pigs in the laboratory. Right. <laughs> Right, it's like, yeah, you guys, you guys, you, you'll be fine. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, actually tell you that it's a, um, you know, this is illegal now. All of a sudden, it's like, wait, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll legalize the herb, but as soon as we can actually get some money out of it, now it's legal. Okay, yeah, and now that it's legal, we're gonna tamper with it. We're gonna give you GMO seeds. We're gonna this. We're gonna that. And it's like, hold up. I went to Costa Rica. The last, yeah, the last time I went to Costa Rica was 2022. Okay. And when I was walking, mm -hmm. I could smell the soil in a way that I hadn't smelled the soil since I was a child. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is real. Like, this is so, the air, the feeling is just like, oh my goodness. And then you just think of product of environment. How many of us have become product of our environment and, you know, watered down, diluted. So when we're inhaling all of this stuff and, you know, we're being shoved all kinds of hair, consume this, take this, take this. And we're not just being in our simplest terms of self. It's like we forget what nature is and how simple this all really is. And, um, you know, that's what ultimately what I'm saying is I thrive to be in my natural state yeah. as much as possible. I, I, my, my, my thoughts of, I'm like, oh yeah, greenhouse. Absolutely. I want to grow this, 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 that, that's, that's all I kind of can think about every day. I'm like, Hmm, what can I do? to not have to rely on, you know, going into a store and worrying about having to see what's in this and what's canned that and what's that. And, oh, I can just grow it myself. I can grow my own seeded grapes, yes. seeded watermelon, <laughs> cherry tree, apple tree, cucumbers, <laughs> celery, like, et cetera. And it's just, it's so simple. And, you know, you go into the store and you're like, why do you guys have genetically modified dragon fruit? Mm -hmm. And other things that are just, just uh, like, no, no. And then you sprayed with pests. Why do I have to sit here and soak all of my fruits and vegetables to this, get vinegar, do a clean and clean and clean. Now, granted, you got to clean your stuff in the garden regardless after you, you know, get it out of the dirt and all that. But I'm saying to the extent where there's so many pesticides and right. we have got to, well, we don't have to, but for those of us who know, when we know better, we do better. And um, I think everybody in this room can agree, like, we are doing the best that we can do to do better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and just, you know, patting yourself on the back for that, like just taking a moment to congratulate yourself, like just for <laughs> just doing the best, you know? Yeah. Best, and we let time be the test. You know, because I love what you said earlier. You actually put me on to something that I had never, I had never even thought before. There's been several things during this conversation that you enlightened, you've enlightened me for. <laughs> been like really just planning the codes and giving me downloads. Because one of them was, you said this, Mona, you said, as humans, as humans, and you didn't just say humans. You said as humans, and then you you paused, and it was like ah, oh, and a light bulb came on, and it was like light, light being. being, humans, light beings. I don't know how I never put those <laughs> two together. <laughs> you made it so simple and plain, like you were like it was right in front of my face this whole time. And and and, and then to to take it a step further, because you just triggered something within me with that. Um, light is uh, electricity is what creates the light. Therefore, us being so electrical, and that's another thing in this society, we are constant, we are literally electrically, electrical. Mm -hmm. So what I know is happening on a whole nother solar level is I think these, entities these parasites these inverts however you want to call them i think they are extracting 
so much of our energy like uh, 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 because we are like a, um, we're literally generators. You know, they, there's not, there's a reason why we say, oh, I'm a manifesting generator. Uh -huh. I, you know, I'm generating wealth. I generate, it's like the, the way we're supposed to be utilizing our, 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 our vessel to generate, it's, it's being inverted in so many ways. So we're not directing the way we want our energy to flow isn't always going in that direction because it's being consumed by mm -hmm. the matrix agenda, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that for me is where I'm like, okay, I have to find myself a, a solution to where I'm not giving them anymore. I'm, I'm feeding me so that I can also nurture, you know, others who are, are, you know, uh, wanting to be in that realm. It's, it's, it's like, it's a, we're, we're heading in another dimension. And I feel like the inverted matrix is kind of like freaking out right now. Cause it's like, oh shoot, they're kind of snapping out of it. We don't have much control. Reptilian brain is uh, 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 crippling. Uh, like. he's, he's getting away. <laughs> Stop him. Stop him now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's breaking free. That part. Yeah, yeah, there was a, oh my gosh. This whole conversation, I swear. There was an episode, so one of the movies of The Matrix, it was called The Animatrix, right? And it was, a, it was an anime, it was a bunch of anime creators that banded together and they just formed like different scenes of their interpretation of the matrix. And so they called it the animatrix because it's based on like Japanese anime, but it's the matrix. Mm -hmm. So one of the scenes, which is my favorite scene from the whole movie is called world record. I'm gonna send it to you after this Thank Mona. You. I'm gonna send it to you. If you've never seen it, I don't think I'm gonna so. send it to you. Yeah. It's my favorite one It's called world record. And this guy, all he wants to do is break a world record like he's trying to run as fast as he can down the stretch of this track mm -hmm. and he runs so fast that they had to literally stop the the simulation they had to stop they had to freeze frame everything to try and stop this man they said he's running too fast he's about to run out of the matrix he's right. run he was running so fast he was about to run out of the simulation he was gonna break the simulation and so that they are chasing him chasing him trying to stop him from <laughs> breaking the breaking the matrix and i don't i'm not gonna spoil to you know what yeah. happens for you i'm gonna yeah. watch it but it was amazing wow it was amazing oh. just to see him like and he had no idea like it wasn't even he didn't even know he was in the matrix he had no idea <laughs> but it was breaking free you know, oh and they were like, sit down, like, get him, get him, get him. Like, every one of them are trying to get, and they could not stop him. They could not stop him. Oh so I'm going to say to you after that, it just gives me, every time I watch it, it never gets old. Oh, my goodness. You you actually just made me think of Baki. Have you ever watched Baki before? Oh, the grappler, grappler Baki. And do you remember the part where he was in the school? Oh. And, um, and he... He was breaking all the stuff, and he was, and the coach is just kind of looking at him like you're fucking everything up. And he's like, "Do you not see his super strength?" Like, <laughs> so many parallels, parallels. You know, I didn't even know you were you. So you big on anime? If you know about Baki, you know about I'm like, I'm like yes, definitely. Oh, you said the giver, mm -hmm. Navia. Oh my goodness, that's a good one too. That's a really good one also. Yeah, we read that one together, The Giver with Jonas, The Receiver, The Giver, and that, that lesson on sameness, like everybody wanted to be the same. Mm. You know, earlier you were talking about the, the black sheep and, you know, no one wanted to be that in The Giver. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to be part of the flock, mm -hmm. you know, part, part of the others. Yeah. Oh, and there was one I just rewatched recently. Mm -hmm. Um, That was uh what is it called oh my goodness where the girl 
she ends up choosing a certain oh my goodness it's gonna it's gonna drive me crazy if i don't remember it she ends up choosing a certain route so you have to you get a certain age and you, you choose the, it starts with a d maybe um yeah. uh okay um let me think about it so she maybe, ends yeah. maybe something different say that again demon slayer you said it starts with a d is it something different it might it's um it, there's this very it's a very specific word um she ends up like she ends up in the in the choosing a certain category of school almost like hogwarts but it's not it's um okay. uh, it's at the tip of my tongue but anyway they found out she when they put her under the machine mm -hmm. he was one of the very few who knew how to like break the simulation Ooh. and so she she literally had to learn how to pretend that she couldn't break the simulation simulation so they wouldn't kill her Ooh. like it was what is that movie it'll come to me when i remember it i'll i'll, I'll tell you the so name she, had, of it. she had to like dumb herself down or she had to lower her level to pretend that she could okay that she wasn't as powerful as she was right but ultimately um that didn't last for very long because how 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 much longer can somebody really of that caliber when you are that in touch with your solar space like how much longer can you just sit and be like yeah um i know what's going on but i'm going to play like stupid because everybody else is sitting here kind of like spaced out not and it's just kind of like, ah, uh, you get you get to a point where it's just like, oh, come on, man. You guys, don't you guys see what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Enough is enough. <laughs> it sounds draining. Like, that could be exhausting of you just trying to pretend all the time that you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Totally, totally. I, I feel like for me, I'm constantly just, um, I like to plant seeds. With people like you, I can, you know, it's just like, like I said earlier, I'm just like that. It just comes out because I'm like, okay, you're, you're, you're able to comprehend on that frequency. But a lot of times I feel like I'm around certain entities where I'm realizing, okay, this has to go slow and steady, or they're going to look at me like I'm completely crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the same thing uh like earlier somebody was asking me you know like wait so you don't eat you know like what do you mean you know so those types of situations and conversations i know sometimes if i have to you know but do i kind of i had to do that around my family to be honest you know i was like okay you know how much do i say because you know they they it might this conversation might go a certain way depending on what i say you know you don't want to you know you want to be able to be transparent but sometimes just like nabiha always says some people aren't ready for their reality to be shattered and it can feel very ah, kitty confirmed <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Absolutely. Um, wow. I didn't even mean to cut you off. It's like the cat spoke. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, right on cue. Right on cue. Um, but yeah. Definitely. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm really, I'm really wanting to, to know this, um, this uh, movie really quick. It's okay. like. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but thank you for sharing. Um, sure. Thank you for um thank you for and oh no that's not the name of the movie i don't think i've even seen that uh Nubia, the the brain on fire i don't think i've seen that one yet this one is something else and it's driving me crazy and i'm like what is it i'm gonna find it um the <sighs> okay you got it take your Thanks. time <laughs> How's the kitty? Did you have have you done anything as far as like is it a boy? Is it a girl? Do you know? Yes. It's a girl. Yeah, it's a girl. It's a girl. Yeah. Oh, did did you like clean her up and everything? I'm sure you did. I'm just, you know, so curious to know about her little story. Yeah, she um no. man. 
you know, some people were saying I found her. Some people were saying she found me. You know, like she just been chilling. She been hanging out. Oh, the little boy, <laughs> the little boy, and she's so chill. She's just like, yeah, I can finally relax. It's been rough for me, man. It's I'm, been tough. <laughs> if you would have seen her, Mona, Mona, if you would have seen her where she was. It was a matter of time. Wow. It was a matter of time. Like cars, trucks, big trucks, because they ride out here in Texas. They zoom out here. So they were just zooming right by her. They were like inches away from her. All it taken was somebody to go with their steering wheel here. Yeah. That was that's all it would have taken. She was right there on the side of the curb in the street, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I was like, like, man, I can't leave her like that. Nah. Wow, that is amazing. You were destined, that is uh, meant to be, definitely meant to be. Yep, you know, I'm gonna, I'm going to definitely have to uh, come back to this one because it's, it's not no worries to me. And I'm one of those people where my brain won't be quiet until I figure it out, but I'm gonna be let it be quiet for now, and then it'll just it'll snap. It'll I'm the same. Out. I'm the same way with puzzles. You know, like if I have a puzzle or a Sudoku or like you know I'm playing a game and I, I haven't finished. It's like I gotta finish. I have to finish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's something about that. You hone in. You zone in. You're like, no, oh, got it. I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, you, when you get it, you'll send it to me, and uh, I'm gonna see that video I was telling you about. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, I, I look forward to watching that. Um, and this one is this is very interesting. You you would definitely, um, goodness gracious, uh, it's like the word is so on my tongue. But you, when I send it, it, it's it'll be a relief when I remember. You'll be like, oh, you probably you probably have already seen it. This old movie, cool. but it's cool. a good one. It, it's a good one. But um, I I know you are ready to rest up, and um, it's been such a pleasure. And uh, until <laughs> next time, yes, I'll, I'll definitely send it to you, Prophet Tess. I will send you that as well. It's 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 driving me insane right now. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> You know the irony is like as soon as I get off the live, it's gonna be like, oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I love it. I love it. So we gotta do this again. Absolutely. You know, it's so wonderful, like learning about you, just listening to you, just um, feeling energy where you where you come from and where you're going. Like, just such a visionary. You know, just that level of like to be able to see beyond, you know, like we start circling back to where we started, but we, there needs to be people like that, that are able to see what others are not able to see. Yes. You know, I, and thank you. Thank, and thank likewise, you. likewise, it's a, it's a pleasure. And yes, these are higher level, higher consciousness of uh, elevated con conversations. I literally live for that. So I appreciate you bringing me up and we'll, We'll continue for sure at a later time. All right. All right. Take care. Peace. Have a good evening. All right. Peace.